Yeah, the 11 question tag. Yeah. From Restless Outdoors. So we'll get right into it. Question number one. I'll let you go first. Oh. Ladies first. Okay. Do you prefer going backpacking in a group or alone? Um, I haven't actually gone backpacking alone yet, but I plan on it, and I, but I think I would enjoy it. Um, I've backpacked in groups, and I, 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 I don't know if I would say I enjoy it in a group either, but I do like backpacking, like with you, or maybe with one other person, or maybe two other people. But I, I wouldn't want to backpack in a large group. I just think it would <coughs> take away from the experience. Right. And I have with like five people before, and it, you know, there's just a, more going on when there's more people, and I like it to kind of be simple. And for me, you know, I do like going out in small groups. I, I've never gone out in a big, big group, um, and I do like going out in small groups, but I do prefer my solo trips. There's just something about being out in nature by yourself that I enjoy it. But a big, big runner-up is you, honey. The second runner-up is going with just you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's right there, neck and neck. <laughs> question, sure. question two. Most challenging hike or trip to date? Um, well, I mean, the Grand Canyon was challenging, as in elevation and all that stuff, but there was one hike that we did that was <coughs> more challenging just because it was I had I was having a harder time that day and so it was when we did that 16 mile section of the Great Western Trail we didn't do a video neither of us were really in the mood well, I was even. sick the night before yeah you had a stomach flu the night before stomach and then flu. I like I don't know I had all kinds of issues and I just wasn't feeling well and we, there was a long part of it on the second day I, well, the first night I couldn't get my backpack to fit right. It was a new backpack and I was struggling with it and it made my back really sore the next day and so that made me cranky and just, oh, it was a mess. I was like crying. It was terrible. <laughs> well, and there was a really long stretch between Brighton where we started and we didn't hike too far the first night because it was evening when mm. we started. Yeah, only like So we miles. took water with us but then... We were hoping on a little spring running on the other side of Brighton down in American Fork drainage and it wasn't. So we ended up going, I don't know, a good eight miles. Yeah, without water. Well, or we had very, very little, little water. water. It was like one liter. And we got to Rock Spring, <clears throat> which is still probably three and a half miles from where we were camping that night. Mm -hmm. with no water but it was running and we could fill up there so yeah that was yeah. A, that was a tough I remember stretch. we took a really long break right there and yeah that was a that was just a really challenging day right the next day wasn't as challenging it was just that that middle day on the trail was very challenging yeah day two pretty pretty rough that was the only time I was really brought to tears on the trail before right. <laughs> so I would say that one was yeah, that's the and so mine would be the same chunk of trail as she's talking about um, but I did 30 miles in two days mm -hmm. and um, you know not just that one section but that trip as a whole was and that just... was solo but that one there is videos yeah there is videos I can link it <clears throat> I can put a link right now up at the top if you guys want to check that one out yeah it's a three video three part video three mm -hmm. different parts yeah. to it there was a lot of footage. For but yeah, it was a miles. solo trip, 30 miles. Pretty, pretty awesome trip, but man, it was tough. It was tough. So yeah, that'd have to be mine. Yeah, it was not easy. So question three, what's the most beautiful campsite you've had? <sighs> I would say my favorite and what I thought was most beautiful was the first place, first night that we stayed in Naturalist Basin. Hyuintas Wilderness. Yeah, the Hyuintas Wilderness, and it, it wasn't like at a lake or at a place. It, we just found this really nice flat spot with this huge fire pit and nice rocks to sit on around it, and it's such a beautiful campground. There was a pond with like frogs at night that would chirp at night, and just we had a huge waterfall. A huge behind waterfall us. in the distance on hang off a cliff. It was coming out it was, of uh, 
East Morat Lake. Yeah. Cause that we, huge waterfall yep. dumps out of East Morat Lake. Yeah, and it was just Gorgeous. the most beautiful place I, I think I'd ever slept. Right. For sure. Not ever been. And we been, do, and we do have slept. a video we can link up to the, mm. and we'll link right now on the top to that one if you guys want to check that one out. That was like a year and a half ago. Right. Look at that. And mine would have to be the San Rafael Swell. Definitely. Uh, we did it. Last fall, and the colors in that canyon it just had me in awe the whole time. Yeah, it was the yellows and yellows, trees. reds in the trees, and just the lighting of the, the sky, the lighting of too. the rock, the desert sky, and oh, the was, water going through. That's really beautiful. Absolutely, I can link. We have a video of that too. I can link. Yeah. From San Rafael Swell, so I can link that now. If you guys want to check that out. But yeah, that would be mine. Uh, it was right by the mine. It was the campsite by the mine. Yeah. Well, that mine we went in. Yeah. That was cool. And we got video of that too, the mine, and it's that's a cool video. Yeah. You guys should check that out. So question four, what winter activities do you enjoy? <coughs> um, so we basically we basically hike, hike backpack. Camp. We do some truck camping in the winter. We go yeah. down south. Yeah, we like to lot, we like to go to the desert in the winter to get out nice. of the snow because it's a little warmer and the parks, the national parks are a lot less crowded. Yeah, like that's when we go to Canyonlands and arches. And, yeah, and, and Moab is a pretty good place to go. Island in the sky, whatnot. Yeah, yeah, but, it is, and that's just our question. That's we're gonna only answer that one once because that's what we yeah, do in the winter. Yeah, that's where. No, we like. snowshoe a little bit, but yeah, not and too I, often. I like putting on my micro spikes. And just, you know, yeah, we don't hiking. need snowshoes here. Yeah, not really. Unless we're going off trail. Mm -hmm. um, you really spikes don't, work you fine. You don't really need them here. Yeah, micro spikes work Actually, fine. spikes are more beneficial just because we do get a lot of ice. Yeah, we do have icy trails. So. All right, question five. Have you ever been hurt on a hike or a backpacking trip? Yes. <laughs> and me, I'll just say right away, I have not been, um, you know, thankfully, I've been very lucky with all the wood chopping and processing I do. And... You know, just mm -hmm. all the hiking, all the solo hiking I've done, I've just never had an issue. I've never rolled an ankle. I mean, I'm, I need to knock on some wood <laughs> right now. Yeah. But probably. I've never even rolled yeah, yeah. an ankle um, as of yet on the trail. So, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Well, I've gotten like small injuries, of course, but I'd say my just from little spills and whatnot. I'm kind of I'm a little on the clumsy side. <laughs> um, but the, the worst one was when we hiked Angel's Landing last year. Um, I hiked all the way up, it was awesome. We were hiking down, we got through all the scrambling and difficult stuff, and then we were on just the paved switchbacks on the way down. And I biffed it and tripped on a, one of those bumps in the... In yeah, there's this, like these humps where they ran the... I hate these paved, the, these paved trails are so nasty. They ran the pipes underneath the concrete yeah, uh, and where the trail is. The trails are, a lot of the trails in Zion, they're paved. Uh, park proper are are paved. So yeah, and not paved smoothly, paved bumpy, and so yeah. <laughs> I have a harder time on that pavement than dirt every time. And so I I hit one of those bumps and my boot stuck and I fell. Face and planted, guys. Face planted. Terrible. Yeah, I Terrible. I actually hit my tooth like, and my I on my lip, on uh, I hit I hit my face on the pavement of the ground and I I scuffed up my cheek. My lip split open. And I started bleeding everywhere, and I hit my hands and my knees. If we can find a picture of that, of her split lip, I'll throw it up yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah, there are some pictures <laughs> somewhere, I think. We may be able to find one. Yeah, and so, and yeah, so, you know, he turns around and asks me if I'm okay, and I see all the blood pouring from my face, and I say no. <laughs> and then I kind of scooch over, and we had a few friends with us, too, on that hike, and we, they, you know, I just got taken care of, but I, I went into shock. Oh, a little yeah. bit and she passed out. Passed out in my arms. <laughs> yeah, he had to lower me down yeah. to the ground because I it was I've never passed out before, so that was a really weird feeling. It was a little bit scary. I was a little bit, a little gun shy for a while after that yeah. on the trail. Just especially just hiking down, I would I go slower. I still to this day I go slower than I used to because of that fall. Yeah. But yeah. Got to be careful on the trail, guys, and always carry a first aid kit. Yes. You know, that was good to have. Have certain things with you that, if something like that goes goes on, you can 
take care of it. And the bottle of water came in handy too, because he dumped that. He dumped a bottle of water over my head to snap me out of going into shock. And that was that came in handy too to have the extra water. Just little things like that. Right. But, yeah. So, question six: Do you practice any survival techniques? Um. Well, I would say that I am a prepared person. So even just on a day hike, I'll pack with me uh, an, a two-day first aid kit in case, and I'd pack like an emergency blanket and a rain jacket, even if it's not supposed to rain. I carry a water filter. You know, I just carry all a fire kit. I usually just carry all those things in my backpack, even just on a day hike, just because you just don't know. In Utah, we have a lot of, we can have some crazy weather. We've gotten stuck in multiple hail of storms. Um, just needing to hunker down and stay out of the way for a while. You know, you, that, that kind of thing happens. Yeah. Um, so, I just, that's how I would survive, just being prepared, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess I do that. And I do the same thing. Um, you know, I've never, honestly, guys, you know, for, for you know, I started into bushcraft just recently, but I, I don't, I can't even start a fire, you know, with, a, with sticks, you know. Like the spinning, what what is it called? The, the um, friction fire. Yeah. You know, I can't, I can't do that. I mean, I, I do want to figure out how to do it at some point, but I just have never tried it. I'm more of a ferrule rod guy. I like to make my own tinder mm -hmm. and char cloth. And, you know, you guys see me use Espic cubes a lot. So, yeah. I mean, that's not really a survival thing, but I do want to get more into that. Um, I do have a bushcraft camp, so I do practice some different you know that's a survival technique building a shelter to keep yourself dry and and out of the wind and elements mm -hmm. so I mean that's one of the things I do and that will be linked into I think question number seven which is what do you think about a permanent bushcraft camp <laughs> oh. um, well I like them I mean I don't I don't I don't know if I would personally build one like for myself on my own I really like helping to build yours and getting it all you know yeah. cool um, but I, and I and I believe in like using only dead you know dead standing or dead fallen trees and things like that like I would it's it's about kind of becoming one with nature not fighting against it so like right. in that way I really like it and it's nice to feel that natural you're out there. It's nice to Still blend in. Still a tent around you. Yeah. You're in a natural setting. Yeah, yeah it was a very cool feeling. I agree. And, and of course, guys, you know, if you follow my channel, you know I have a bushcraft camp. So I, I'm i the same way. You know, I'm not going to go clear cut a forest to, you know, build something. Um, so, you know, I, I do feel like anything like that is, is really bad. Uh, Survival Lily, I don't know if any of you guys follow Survival Lily, but she has a... A video out that I'll try to link right now if I can if I can end up finding it I'll put it on there and it's about you know her bushcraft and a lot of people give her crap because you know she builds mm -hmm. a lot of different shelters mm -hmm. but she goes into like detail about clear cutting and and what the difference is between that and you know, how harmful it really is. Yeah, simply like cutting that. down even a few live trees, if you were needing to do it, say to clear your property to build a cabin. Um, that it really, you know, those couple trees are not going to have a huge impact. It's it's clear cutting that is what does it. But she explains it a lot better than me. You know, I'm not a I'm not an expert on it. Yeah. But, but we're lucky in Utah. They, they were, everything's so forested. There's so many dead trees. Right. We have so many dead trees. You know, I didn't use any live trees in the building no, of my not at of all. my lean to and firewall. Yeah. There's just so so many. It dead was all trees. dead. A lot. And and it's semi permanent. Mm -hmm. So if I decided to take it down, within mm -hmm. one season, those weeds are gonna grow back. Yeah. And you'd never know there was a camp ever there. Um, so yeah. I, I, I believe in definitely staying one with nature as close as possible yeah. as you can. So I'm not sure how permanent I would say I would go, but, you know. Well, if it was my property, I would build yeah. a cabin. Yeah, of course. But for every tree I cut down on my property to build my cabin, I'd plant another one. Yeah. Because you have to... In see, a better place. If, well, if, if it's your property and you planned on harvesting wood to burn, wood mm -hmm. to build, wood yeah, to do this, you're going to have to replant 
trees to replace those trees on your property but that's a whole nother that's a whole nother thing anyways guys we'll get to number eight what is your favorite recipe on or for the outdoors or on the trail um, well I have two favorite recipes but one of them you kind of have to have a fight one of them would be more of a backpacking preference and one is like a campfire preference. I really liked our grilled cheese on the campfire. That was a surprisingly wonderful because of the smoky flavor of the everything. It was super tasty. But as far as like easy on the trail meal that I find really satisfying is our Frito pies. We actually had that for lunch. Just now. Yeah, or lunch <laughs> slash dinner or whatever that was. And it's just really, you have to get spicy chili some kind of spicy chili with just Fritos and cheddar cheese and it's just it's just so satisfying and it's warming. It's hearty. Yeah. It's a hearty it's, meal. Fills it makes you up. my belly warm, you know, and it's just it's a comfort food and I just it's easy. Or we could do the are my dehydrated chili when we're backpacking and that was really good. Definitely when we made one of my that favorites. Way. Or the chili mac, you know, that all of that was so good. It's just something that spicy chili is what mm. I really love on the trail. And mine guys Probably to date, other than these burgers we made one time up at my winter camp, we made some burgers oh, that yeah, were with the avocado and unbelievable. Tomato. But yeah. still, I think my favorite is um, it was the sausage stew. Yeah. It was so good, and I'm such a fan of sausage. Oh yeah, because we put a little, did we put a little cabbage in there too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, that was yummy. That was good soup. And yeah, that was just wonderful we it was all fresh ingredients that we cut right there on the spot mm -hmm. threw it in and it must have been all the oils in that sausage that made oh, it just yeah. wonderful that stew well and the tomatoes made and yeah a we nice did sauce. we did a nice sauce with the with the fresh these fresh yellow mm -hmm. red and we brought a little seasoning mix and threw it in there yeah an orange red orange and yellow tomatoes tomatoes baby tomatoes mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, and we were potatoes and carrots. That was so good. Yeah, it was yummy. There was a there's a video on that one. Right. I'm definitely I, I think we're advocates more of cooking, trying to cook more. Unless we're backpacking and we gotta go light, then it's always gonna be the home dehydrated meals. Yeah. Um, Cause they are so but light. If we're and in they the truck. So well. Or but if if we're gonna go up to the bushcraft camp. We're gonna do some real cooking. Yeah, we're gonna cook, man. We're gonna cook. Probably some over food the fire. We're gonna eat well, cause that's that's a big part of. Uh, that's a big being part outdoors. of what I love about it yep, is, is cooking eating, over fire. Eating good food. Mm -hmm. uh, so question number nine, how do you motivate yourself in bad weather? Hmm. I don't know. I, I actually, I enjoy what most people would say is bad weather. I kind of, I like when it rains or when it snows because I, it's, you can see the trail and it's such a different way. It's like a whole other experience. Yeah, it is. And so I just, I really Especially enjoy, I really enjoy those bad weather. So a bad weather to me would probably be if it was like really, really hot. Like that would probably be bad. That would be like less motivating for me is if it was really, really hot. Right. But we, I just, I usually go on trails that have water and so I can cool off and you know, there are ways, there are ways to keep yourself comfortable usually no matter what the weather is like. So I just try to have, have all those at my, you know, at my disposal, right. wherever I go. I can For me guys, you know, this channel, even though I haven't done it a lot lately, it started off as a gear review channel. And I do, you know, if you go back in my older videos, I have a lot of gear reviews. <laughs> Uh, maybe not as some, not, not as much as some, like Dev, yeah. but mm -hmm. I have quite a few. Um, so, I love going out in bad weather mm -hmm. and testing the tents and, you know, how warm sleeping bags actually keep you. Um, I like putting gears through the paces, mm -hmm. you know. He gets excited when there's a storm. Yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> um, and it's too, it's part of testing myself. Um and challenging myself and three you know when I did when I came back and got you know about four or five years ago when I got back heavy into the outdoors I used it as a way to kick my own ass you know get out there put a pack on and just just, just kick my own ass mm -hmm. you know get into shape and yeah that's that was 
my three main reasons for getting back into backpacking. And I love being out here. I mean, I love mm-hmm. love being out in it. So uh, we are on ten. What would uh, be your dream destination? Oh yeah, this is the one that I couldn't. Yeah. Figure Mine out. is beaches in Thailand. I'd love to go beach exploring. If I could go anywhere right now, it would. Yeah, I would want to go to Thailand. And I know it's weird because I'm, you know, I'm such a mountain guy. I love the mountains, and. But nonetheless, I've never been to Thailand, and I've seen a lot of videos about Thailand, and it just looks absolutely like the most gorgeous place on on the planet. So I'd love to go check out Thailand, definitely. Um, I know I haven't said this one yet, but it seems like like every picture that I see of outdoors that I see, and I'm like, oh, I want to see that. It's usually from Norway. And I, it's, I'm super intrigued by that place. Like, I think, I, I think I'd really like to go to Norway. Or Sweden. Yeah. Because I, I think there's some Nagalera. stuff. I think there's some <laughs> stuff to see. That place is beautiful. Yeah. But yeah, I think there is too, I agree. Yeah, I don't know. It just seems like every picture I've seen is, is some epic, amazing, like, natural, yeah. interesting thing. You know, I want to, I'd like, you know, the northern lights and things, like all that stuff. Is on one place. I'd love to go adventure around. Question 11. Final question. What is your heaviest Um, piece of gear? I think my heaviest (coughs) piece of gear is my backpack. Your 65? Yeah, my 65, my Osprey AG Aura Mm -hmm. 65 liter. It's, I think it's almost five pounds or something like that. I think they were pretty close. Which is, it's kind of heavy. So that's one of the things on my list of things I'd like to get this season is a lightweight backpack. Right. To start going more, more light. For backpacking. Yeah, and mine, I don't know you guys, I really have to weigh, it's either my, it's either my sleeping bag, my zero Your degree zero. sleeping mm-hmm. bag, which is about five pounds I think. That thing's heavy. Yeah, it's, it's a heavy bag. <laughs> Or it's going to be my camera gear, but I haven't weighed, you know, the GoPro or the Canon or my tripod or the cases that I'd usually have them in to protect them yeah. or the batteries, the mic. I haven't weighed any of that stuff, guys. So I, it's one of those two. It's either yeah. the camera gear or that big ass <laughs> sleeping bag. I mean, that's yeah. all it could be. Yeah, Yeah, because everything else, I'm pretty lightweight. I mean, yeah, my Osprey backpack isn't the lightest either, but my I think my sleeping bag is more is heavier. Yeah, than my Osprey. Mm -hmm. That's a heavy bag. Backpack. So, all right, guys, that concludes the 11 or 22, however you look at it, 22 question tag. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate you. You guys, everyone needs to go check out Restless Outdoors channel. Also check out my buddy Devin's channel, uh, Backcountry Exposure. Hi, it's John here with uh, an 11 question tag from Restless Outdoor. The first question is, uh, would I prefer backpacking alone or in a group? Um, I've never done an alone. Um, and frankly, it's a little intense thinking about doing something alone like that. Uh, most of my Camping has been with two to five people at the most. Um, I prefer group. Uh, I get a little leery when I'm out there by myself. Uh, I haven't taken that step. It's a big step to go alone, I think. The second question is most challenging hike that I've been involved in. Um, there's several of them, actually. Um, Granddaddy Basin was one of my very first ones, and it was a very long one, but I was probably in the best shape that I'd been in, and uh, I found it challenging in the aspect that I was able to just really put some miles on. I felt very good that that particular one, but I think, in all honesty, the most challenging one that I've been experienced with with my son Corbin um, when we did Guardsman's Pass. Uh, There were several spots, unfortunately, where we lost the trail in the snow, and uh, ended up having to hike up a very steep incline of probably, 
I would say a hundred yards, maybe just shy of that, and it was pretty intense for me. Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> Let's see, question number three, most beautiful campsite. Well, um, you know, last year we went up to Naturalist Basin, and because of the storms that went on there that Corbin mentioned in his questions about a hell storm that they had to hunker down in at one point, um, Scudder Lake was beautiful, but in all honesty, on the trail from Guardsman's Pass when we stayed right below Wildcat Ridge, where we had views of the Salt Lake Valley off, that was probably, we were hunkered down under this huge pine tree, and there wasn't a lot of space, but the tent fit in there just right, and there was a ridge running straight up from us that, so we could see the valley. Well, so I think that was my... Yeah, that was amazing. I, that, that was one, amazing. I, I kind of forgot about it. That, I don't know how, but that was yeah, an amazing spot. That was, for me, I think the most amazing. Um, winter activities, question number four. Camping and hiking is pretty much all I've done in the winter time. I have done a couple south excursions with Corbin down to the south, uh, LaSalle Mount Range and a few places like that, a couple of trunk camps, as well as some actual tent camping that we've done down there. Um, that's about it for winter activities. Not big in uh, spending a ton of time up in the mountains in the deep snow. I mean, you I don't mind a couple. Used of, to ski a lot though. Yeah, I did used to ski a lot until I broke my knee. But uh, other than that, that's about it for number four. Number five. Have I ever been hurt on a hike? No, I, I was the only thing I was thinking about was on guardsman's hike when we were coming down when I did my little slide right. ski venture took a pretty hard tumble I think I bruised my ego more than anything else but I remember my backpack that's when my clamps had ripped off of that and stuff. Right. but that's probably that's right. the only thing that's yeah. ever been yeah but you didn't get injured so that was good didn't get injured no that's no good. not at all so I haven't really had any issues with I don't handle the axe much when I'm up with Corbin I let him do a lot of that I saw a lot but uh, I stay away from the axe Let's see, do I practice, number six, do I practice survival techniques? To some extent, I don't have much experience with starting a fire, um, you know, using the dry kindling or dry method. Um, you would usually cube it, uh, cubes or whatever is what I use. Uh, so I wouldn't say I have much. I mean, yeah, I can build a basic shelter. I've done that with Corbin several times. Um, I have participated in up at his bushcraft camp a few times, um, and a lot of times when we go out camp, we do a lot of stuff that's basic survival as far as, you know, boiling snow for water, that type of stuff would need to be, uh, but, but I'm not really crafted in that area at all very much. But we are going to be doing some different stuff up at the bushcraft camp soon. Yes, we'll be doing a lot more of that. That would be cool. Number seven. What do you think about a bushcraft camp? Well, I think it's pretty cool because uh, I am also involved with Corbin in the bushcraft camp to some extent, and I think it's cool that it is all breakdown, that within two days, if we brushed the camp, you wouldn't even know it was there. That's how well it is designed into nature and easy to get out of there, and it's all natural. So that's cool. If I had my own property, for sure, I would build a permanent base, uh, you know, base ba or backcountry base camp. I think it'd be co cool to have something like that. Um, let's see, number eight, favorite recipe for trail versus truck? Well, on the trail, I would have to agree that the uh, homemade dehydrated chili that we've had in the past has been something Mel puts that together. I think that's my favorite one of all of them with the tortillas and stuff that we do. That's definitely one of mine. For that's sure. absolutely <laughs> my favorite on the trail one. And then also, you know, we did the steaks on the charcoal uh, directly on them, cooked them right on the fire and stuff. Unfortunately, my steak was a little rawer than Corbin's, but I had a taste of his along with the veggies that we cooked that time. It was very good. Yeah, and that was at the bushcraft camp. And that was at the bushcraft camp. I think I can link that. If you guys are interested in watching it. Number nine. How do you motivate yourself in bad weather? Um, 
I don't have a problem motivating myself in bad weather. That's, I think, when your survival instincts that we're inbred and born with to stay alive kick in. I kind of find it an adrenaline rush when we're pushed to something, whether it's a snowstorm or whether, you know, again, Guardsman's Pass is probably one of our most critical climbs because we had a lot of snow and adverse conditions, and uh, it was interesting. Uh, so, yeah, I think that you become motivated when you realize that, uh, you know, your safety is involved if you're starting to do things like hiking up 100 yards of a steep incline, that type of stuff. So you're motivated to stay alive at that point in time with that kind of stuff. Number 10 is uh, my dream destination. And me and Corbin talked about this um, after I'd seen a little bit of his. And I think the Swiss Alps in Sweden would be a place that I'd like to visit uh, in the summertime, not in the wintertime. Number 11, heaviest piece of gear. Well, mine would be my sleeping bag. My five degree is the heaviest piece of equipment that I carry in my, in my arsenal of stuff. All right, guys, thanks. It was good talking with you. See you later, bye. Thanks, Adam. We'll see you, see you guys.